Facts Verse presents The Most Beautiful Woodstock 1969 Photos Ever Captured Woodstock was one of the most iconic events in history. It was a three-day-long music festival that took place on a dairy farm in upstate New York. The festival began August 15, 1969, and close to 400,000 people showed up. So many people showed up for the festival that upstate New York saw the worst traffic jam in its history. Woodstock was known as a time for peace, love, and music. It was the biggest, even in 1969. To help you get a better idea of how incredible this festival was, here are a few of the most beautiful Woodstock photos ever captured. Just about every photo from Woodstock shows people having a wonderful time. Being there was incredible, and the man in this photo couldn't look happier. The organizers had trouble finding a place to hold the festival. They found a dairy farmer who was willing to lend them his land. The organizers told the farm owner that they were expecting 50,000 people. When over 400,000 showed up, it caused a few issues. The farmer had to deal with the consequences afterwards. With all the people headed to upstate New York, the traffic soon got out of control and came to a complete standstill. Many of the people stuck in traffic just left their cars on the road and got to Woodstock on foot. Others got out of their cars and played their own music in the middle of the traffic jam. Freedom was the message in Woodstock, and people felt free to get comfortable wherever and however they liked. This man chose two cars to take a break from the fun. It was an unusual spot and potentially dangerous, but he seems pretty content. Woodstock was a place for love, and the woman in this photo has love pouring out of her. This quintessential flower child seems to be having a great time snuggling with her boyfriend. Bill Hanley was the man in charge of sound engineering at Woodstock. He built a special speaker column with high towers. The setup was designed for 150,000 people to hear the music, but when that number almost tripled, the sound wasn't an issue. Many men saw the unique tower as the perfect place to climb and get a bird's-eye view of the crowd below. Before the music started, Sri Swami Sachinananda, a spiritual master, opened the festival with a speech. Over 400,000 people listened to him speak about the power of energy and sound. He told the crowd that it was greater than anything in the world and controlled the universe. The Swami added that despite popular belief, atomic vibrations are not as powerful as sound. It was the largest crowd that he would ever speak in front of. Jimi Hendrix performed at Woodstock, and the crowd waited three long days to hear him perform. His opening song was The Star-Spangled Banner, and the song became synonymous with the festival. The band that Jimmy played Woodstock with was temporary. The regular band broke up before the festival, so he had to assemble a new band very quickly on short notice. The group was called The Gypsy Sons and Rainbows, and it was their first time playing in front of a large crowd. Janis Joplin performed on the second day of the festival. She was paid $7,500, and her song, Peace of My Heart, is the most remembered song from the festival. Due to the traffic jam on the way to the festival, Janice had to be flown in by helicopter. She told her band that despite the size of the crowd, they should just act like it's any other paying gig. After she performed, Janice stayed at Woodstock for the rest of the festival. Woodstock didn't discriminate against race, sex, or even age. Many parents brought their children to Woodstock and had fun. The little girl in this photo seems to be having the time of her life. Many parents brought their babies, and even a few babies were born during the festival. John Sebastian wasn't set to be a performer at Woodstock. He initially went to the festival just as a spectator, but he was then asked by the organizers to perform. They needed an acoustic player and, well, John agreed. During the performance, he played three songs from his album that had not been released yet and two other songs. His performance was iconic. Carlos Santana and his band were set to play the festival. He decided to take some psychedelics before going on stage, though. He was sure that he'd come down before it was his turn. He says that he was peaking around 2 o'clock, and the organizers told him that if he didn't go on stage right then, he wouldn't go on at all. So he got on stage, and he killed. The audience loved him, and Carlos says he's never performed that messed up ever again. The incredible music on stage inspired people to make their own music off stage. People started playing the drums on anything they could find. They used trash cans and even each other to play along with the bands. People at Woodstock set up their own makeshift shops to sell crafts, tie-dye clothing, and even drug paraphernalia. These people made a lot of money and took pride in seeing people enjoying the festival with their merchandise. Even though there was a lot going on at Woodstock, many people took some time out from the action for romance. This couple found a quiet place in the woods to enjoy one another during the festival. Some people described Woodstock as the most romantic time of their lives. 
Different people wanted different experiences from Woodstock, and there was something for everyone. The signs on these trees let everybody know which way to go. Groovy Way, Gentle Path, and Highway are self-explanatory, and the people knew exactly where to go to get what they wanted. This man wanted to take his entire family to Woodstock, and he wanted to travel in style. I mean, really, how many fathers would create a psychedelic bus just to go to a music festival? You can see the whole family taking a break from the fun for a snack and a 7-Up. The festival's organizers planned for 50,000 people, as we already mentioned. Well, with 350,000 more people than expected showing up, that food ran out fast. Fortunately, Woodstock was a place of collective love and sharing. The people who brought and prepared their own food at the festival were more than happy to share what they had with hungry fellow festival-goers. Between the fun, the music, and the drugs, festival-goers needed to take a break from the fun for a nap. Most people used any surface they could find to take a break from the action. This guy set up a pretty comfortable resting place on a motorcycle. Many people drove to Woodstock in vans so that plenty of friends could pack in together. As it turned out, the vans had a dual purpose. The roofs made great places to watch the performers with a bird's-eye view. There was no dress code at Woodstock. People were accepted by all, no matter what they were wearing. The man in this photo is proof of that. Between the cape and the skull on the stick, you'd think that he would have been an outcast. But nope, he was accepted by all. Sharing was one of Woodstock's main messages. In this photo, you can see a man and a woman sharing a blanket to keep warm. Woodstock was one of the biggest music festivals in history, which is part of what made it so legendary. Throughout the three-day festival, over 30 bands played. There was something at Woodstock for everyone. The rain was an issue during the festival, but it didn't drive people away. They knew that eventually the sun would come out, and it did. When the clouds broke and the sun shined down, people celebrated. Woodstock was a time for making new friends and showing them kindness. The men in this photo made a great shelter and invited a stranger to join them when the rain came down. Not only did they share their shelter with the stranger, they also shared their food and clothes. Unfortunately, all good things do come to an end. On August 18, 1969, the 400,000 attendees finished celebrating the three days of peace, love, and joy and music. Everybody headed home and went back to their lives. Life for the dairy farmer who offered the property was a bit more complicated than when the festival began. The people of his small town were not happy about the crowd, the traffic, and the trash that the festival-goers left behind. The people shunned the man and his wife in town, and they were no longer welcome at the general store. Well, so much for that peace, love, and sharing thing. Subscribe for more.